born actually in Melbourne, back in 1985, and have been practicing medicine ever since 1986. And I've uh, been in the field of uh, endocrinology and diabetes care since 1998. So it's been a good uh, almost 20 years now uh, in the field of diabetes. Causes of diabetes principally uh, in adults, which is a call to uh, the majority is because of genetic factors. There's a strong family history of diabetes in family, and if both parents have diabetes, they can even have a higher um, possibility that that person has diabetes. In the younger ones, there is a type 1 uh, diabetes mellitus where the person is deficient in insulin. So in this group of people, they need insulin earlier in life. And there are also other types of diabetes because of some hormone imbalances and because of uh, certain types of medication such as steroids. So we have to be careful in what, uh, what we are giving to patients. In terms of diabetes, so uh, most commonly uh, lethargy or feeling tired. Secondly, is passing a lot of urine, like either during the daytime, right, and having excessive thirst. Uh, some people actually complain of weight loss or even weight gain, which is a paradox. And at the same time, they might have an increased rate of urinary infections or genital infections or even skin infections uh, and they're more prone to other types of infections as well and uh, in a few people they actually present in hospital with stroke or with heart attacks uh, and at that time they will realize that they have diabetes way to manage diabetes one is the first one that i need to mention is that in all of diabetes care, we have what we call top patient empowerment where we, we encourage the patient to take care of themselves with our guidance. So diabetes care involves uh, taking charge of one's uh, weight, making sure that uh, one is not uh, overweight. And secondly, is to make sure that the uh, dietary component is taken care of. Uh, less fat, less carbohydrate, and so on, and having a dietitian to guide him. Thirdly, is the medication. So there's so many types of medications now. Some are taken once a day, twice a day, three times a day, and these are pills. And the other type is the injectable types of um, medications, and they fall into two groups. One is called insulin, and the other one is called non-insulin. So we have a full range of medication with the principal aim of getting the sugar under control. One, there is clearly no certain cure for diabetes. There has been a lot of research with pancreatic transplants and so on, but those cases are very, very few. And uh, at the moment, by far the majority, there is no cure, but it is very, very easy to control. There has been a lot of research in the non-insulin uh, injectables. There are a lot of new pills which handles the different metabolism in the body. And um, thirdly, is there's a lot of uh, research going on with uh, transplants, pancreatic transplants, but uh, the failure rate is very high. So most of research has actually gone on to be developing new drugs. Uh, which work on various types of cells in the body in, in improving what we call the insulin sensitivity in the body. And so far, these drugs have, um, have been successful in being launched in the global market of this. First to come, uh, they will develop the eye disease, poor vision, poor circulation to the feet, pain and numbness in the feet, they can have a kidney disease, a heart attack is the most serious one and stroke is also a serious complication. But as I said, with, uh, with good control at the beginning and throughout the life of the patient, 
not, these complications can actually be either delayed or it can be prevented. Around us, food is available 24 hours a day, uh, unlike in Europe. So what we can do is uh, we will constantly remind and advise our patients to cut down on the carbohydrate intake. The key factor here is cut down on the carbohydrate intake, rice, bread, potatoes uh, and pasta and to increase the amount of protein a little bit and cut back a lot of fats and oils. This basically is more or less the same kind of advice that we give to overweight patients and of course cutting down on highly refined uh, sugars as well. In the past 10 or 15 years, the government has stepped up uh, the awareness campaigns every single year with the help of the various diabetes societies, the NGO, um, with volunteers and a lot of the specialists around that have increased over the years. Uh, secondly, there has been an increase in training of uh, all the nurses in the Ministry of Health and there has also been uh, an increase in the number of trained diabetes educated nurses who are a very important resource persons in every medical center and these are the these diabetes educated personnel who spend a lot of time uh, reinforcing uh, good education to the patients one child can certainly have diabetes, very rare, called type 1, um, but that would be almost recognisable in their first year of life. Perhaps not at newborn, but perhaps in the first year of life. So yes, a child can have diabetes early in life. Which is, uh, is partly hereditary. Um, well, especially for those whose, whose parents are both diabetic, certainly the chance of um, becoming diabetic is a lot higher, 50% compared to those who do not have diabetic parents. Pre-screening nowadays is a very, very important um, element. Even when one is healthy, checking the blood sugar, which is a very easy thing to do now, it just takes about 5 to 10 seconds to check one's glucose anywhere during uh, events, expo, during the a visit to the family doctor. This is the pre-screening awareness. Secondly, is if one has a high probability of getting diabetes early in life, they have a test called OGTT or oral glucose tolerance test, which helps to identify whether one is diabetic or not. So yes, that is certainly a way to go. As hospital for treating diabetes, um, the ministry, the government, I think, has gone a, a long way to train as many family physicians um, to take care of patients with diabetes at the primary level, at the primary care level, so that the tertiary hospitals would not be um, overwhelmed by patients with diabetes with complications. So they have done a really, really good job over the past five to ten years. So. But having said that, the best care in diabetes, for those with complications, they have to be referred early, sooner than later, to the uh, hospitals with specialists in the field of endocrinology. If they are difficult diabetes to handle, and also those with uh, nephrology or kidney uh, specialties, and those uh, in the area of cardiology. These are the mainly the three three main areas. For the past uh, ten or fifteen years, is the increase in awareness of diabetes among the public, the increased motivation about about people who are well and wanting to know whether they and they actually come forward to know whether they have diabetes or not, and those who have diabetes they are more widely read. They go to the internet and they ask a lot of questions and they are more empowered to change their own lifestyle and we encourage them by having all these uh, trained educator nurses to uh, reinforce their education. So this is the, these are the changes. But the complications have not really uh, improved over the years, especially those with kidney failure.
failure. The fifth end station of failure in Malaysia, diabetes is still the main cause of chronic kidney disease. So we have a long way to go in patients. I would certainly advise our community to come forward and um, be very proactive in making sure that their weight is absolutely under control from when they're young. They educate their own children to be aware of uh, their risk factors if they have parents who have diabetes. And at the same time, when they do know that they have diabetes, they are proactive in taking charge of their disease and, uh, uh, and empower themselves to be absolutely in control with all the home monitoring and, uh, and all kinds of gadgetry now available in this day and age.